afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for giving us your lunch hour. My name is Andra. My gender pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm a study abroad advisor. Um, studying abroad as a pol political science student is something I think that all of you should try to take advantage of. I recognize that not everyone is able to study abroad, and we do have some pretty cool study away options uh, that exist now and new study away options in development. Um, I just wanted to say that up front. But we hope that today will be both informative and um, kind of stir some excitement in all of you about the possibilities of, of what's available to you. Um, so with that, all right, let's get started. Um, for those of you who have attended one of our first steps sessions in the past, um, this first part will be very similar, um, but I promise that we will get into the nitty gritty of studying abroad as a po political science student and then uh, lots and lots of program recommendations for political science majors. So there's a lot to think about when it comes to studying abroad. When is the best time for you to go abroad? What type of program should you choose? Where should you go? Do you have to speak the host language? Uh, how are you going to finance your time abroad? How might your the, the intersections of your identity come into play during your time abroad? And how is this going to fit into your overall two or four year plan? So we're gonna break all of that down today. So in terms of when is the best time to go abroad, that's dependent on you and your academic plan and your extracurriculars and what you have going on in your life. So the best time for you to go abroad may not be the same as your friend's best time to go abroad. We have options available in the summer, for a quarter, for a semester, for academic year. Many of our students choose to go abroad more than once. Maybe you start off doing a summer and then you go abroad for a semester. The most important thing is to work with your academic advisors to determine when is that best time for you to go abroad. There may be one or two specific terms that work well for you to go abroad during the school year. And we want to identify those nice and early so you can be, begin planning everything else around that time of um, in terms of your courses and everything else that you have going on. So identifying when you want to go abroad as early in this process as possible is really helpful. It's also important to know what the program dates are. UC San Diego is on the quarter system. Most of the rest of the world is on the semester system. So that means for our students who are studying abroad in the fall, they're able to just miss fall quarter on our campus and participate in a fall semester program. But for our students who are thinking about going for a spring semester, they're going to be missing winter and spring quarters on our campus. So it's also important to learn that nice and early so that you can begin to plan around those times. Um, and then also many of our program dates don't align with our terms. So for example, for some of our programs in um, the Southern Hemisphere, their fall term starts in July instead of August or September. So it's helpful to kind of look at those program dates in advance so you can begin to plan. Um, you should also know that our application deadlines are uh, pretty far in advance of when the programs actually start. So we recommend planning at least six months, generally nine months in advance of when you wanna go. For example, our students who are planning to study abroad summer or fall 2022, so that's next summer or fall, are actually starting their application cycle right now. <clears throat> Just wanna make sure everyone's uh, muted. That would be great, thanks. So um, they're in their application cycle now. So they are starting their applications now with deadlines in early winter quarter for participation in summer and fall next year. So that's about how far in advance you need to begin planning. Um, and then again, we wanna make sure that this fits into your overall, uh, your overall academic time here. We have data to prove that students who study abroad graduate more on time or earlier than students that don't because of all the academic planning that's a part of this process. We wanna make sure that you start planning as early as possible. Just a second, quick water break. All right, let's talk about location. So, uh, UC San Diego is in uh, San Diego, which is a pretty urban environment, but maybe for your time abroad, you're thinking of studying in a more rural location or you want a smaller school. Uh, you may, we're in a big city, maybe you want to be in a small city. 
Maybe you want more of a field experience. So it's important to think about what kind of location do you see yourself in for that duration of time? Does the program have the courses that you need? You may have always dreamt of studying in X city or at X university, but perhaps it doesn't have the courses that are the best fit for you. So we wanna take a look at the courses that are actually offered on these programs. And then what type of housing do they offer? Maybe you live in a dorm here at UC San Diego, but your program offers uh, an apartment as a housing option in the city, or it offers uh, living with a host family that's called a homestay. So taking a look at the different types of housing options available and making sure that you're selecting something that you're comfortable with is also really important. And then language, a question that we get a lot is, <clears throat> I only speak English, I don't speak the language of my host country, can I actually study there? And the answer in almost every case is yes. <clears throat> so in the vast majority of our programs abroad, we always have course options available in English. So our students are, for the most part, taking their courses in English, but many of them are also studying the host language. So if you are a student who's studying a, another language, a second or third or fourth language, and you want to study abroad in a country whose, host ling whose language is that uh, language that you're studying, you're welcome to take your courses in the host language. Or if you're a native speaker, you're welcome to take your courses in the host language, but it's generally not a requirement for most programs. Some programs do have a minimum language requirement, but you can always find at least one program option in every country where the courses are taught in English. And then you can study the host language on top of that if you want. Uh, so know that it's not a requirement that you speak the host language in order to study in a non-English speaking country. Okay, finances, this is a really big one. For those of you who receive financial aid, which is likely most of you because 70% of students that study at UC San Diego receive financial aid. I'm here to let you know that you can take your financial aid with you uh, and apply it towards the cost of your study abroad program. So we're gonna break that, <clears throat> we're gonna break that down a little bit more in a moment, but know that you can study abroad and take your financial aid with you. Uh, academic year 2018, 2019 was our last normal year of study abroad, which is really, weird to say at this point, but that year we gave out $970,000 in financial aid. Um, that includes scholarships for students, so that's quite a lot of aid. So know that that's a big part of this process. <clears throat> we also have tons of scholarships available, um, for, for specifically study abroad scholarships, so both through our office and through the study abroad programs, as well as national study abroad scholarships. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, my son gave me a cold from preschool. Making sure that our students get um, study abroad scholarships is so important to us that we offer essay writing workshops. <clears throat> we typically run those in winter quarter shortly before the scholarship deadlines. <clears throat> so those will happen typically in February and we work with students to make sure that they have the best possible essays um, to receive scholarships. We actually found out the other day that um, we are a Gilman scholarship, which is the biggest national study abroad scholarship. We are a Gilman scholarship top receiving institutions. That means we have one of uh, the highest numbers of students receiving the Gilman scholarship. Uh, so that's a big scholarship where students can receive up to $5,000 towards the cost of their study abroad program. That's one scholarship. And uh, this last cycle, we had 17 students receive the Gilman Scholarship. So when I say that we take our scholarship essays seriously, I really mean that. All right, so I wanna reiterate again that staying on track is such an important part of this process. We do not want you delaying graduation as a result of studying abroad, um, unless it's something that you're already planning to do. So all of that academic advising, all of that early planning is so critical to this process because it's how we make sure that students stay on track for graduation.
weeks, we want you to discuss your entire academic plan with your academic advisor. So if you're a first year student right now, that means meeting with your advisors sometime this year to discuss studying abroad, maybe fall of your junior year. That kind of planning in advance can be really helpful because then you can align all of your courses over the next several quarters with your study abroad term in, in mind. You might also consider doing an internship or research while you're abroad. Uh, we have many students to take advantage of that during their time abroad. So you can do a standalone internship or standalone research program, or you can combine it as part of your study abroad program. So that means maybe instead of taking four courses abroad, you take three courses plus an internship or three courses plus in, uh, research. And you can receive academic credit for your internship or research opportunity abroad, which is really great. So it's certainly something that we encourage students to take advantage of. And then you will petition your courses upon return. And Natalie will talk a lot more about that for political science students here in a moment. All right, so your identity matters. Your identity matters here on campus and your identity matters while you're studying abroad. And it's really important, uh, we feel it's really important that students think about the intersections of their identity and how that might come into play during their time abroad. So we have a really great resource page on our website um, that kind of gives you resources and gives you a look at the experiences of students abroad and how their identities were uh, salient or were not salient during their time abroad. So what's it like to be a black woman in China? What's it like to be a queer student in Argentina? And many, many more. So we encourage you to check that out. <clears throat> if we're missing resources, if there's something that's not represented there, please let us know. We're constantly adding to this page. We just want to make sure that you are prepared for uh, studying and living in your host country. All right, so there are a lot of study abroad programs out there. Probably if you have been looking at study abroad at all throughout this time, you may have seen a bunch of different acronyms of different study abroad programs. I'm going to break those down for you right now. So first up is our UCEAP program or the University of California <clears throat> Education Abroad program. The UC is so big, we have our own study abroad program. So that means uh, students across the system, across the UC system, can study abroad at our exchange universities and earn UC credit. So if you've always dreamed, at, dreamed of studying at Fudan University in China, you can study at Fudan earning UC credit and taking all of your financial aid with you. <clears throat> so that's your state and your federal aid, that's your UC aid, that's your outside scholarships. All of that aid will come with you. And there are over 500 different program options around the world. There are over 50 different countries available through UCEAP. So it's a very robust program portfolio. It is our most popular program route. And so we encourage you to check out the different options available through UCEAP. Pay really special attention to the eligibility requirements. Um, sometimes there might be certain minimum GPA requirement. There might be minimum language requirements, but it's a very diverse portfolio of programs. So certainly a great option for many of our students. Uh, next up would be our Opportunities Abroad program. So if, if you've looked through all of the UCEAP options and you just don't see the program that's the right fit for you, or maybe you have a country or a university in mind that we are not currently partnered with, that's where OAP comes into play. This is an opportunity for you to earn transfer credit from any other accredited institution around the world. For many of our students, this is the right option for them. Um, especially for our international students, this could be an opportunity to skip uh, paying your, your international or non-resident students to skip paying that non-resident fee, which you will definitely be paying um, <clears throat> when you are participating in the UCEAP program. So this route might be the right, right route for you. You can search programs on your own or chat with us about this opportunity if you feel it's right for you. And I do think there are questions coming in, in the chat and just know that I will get to those soon. In addition, we also have program options available through the other UCs. So um, perhaps you've seen UC Davis or UCLA's study abroad programs and you're wondering if you can participate and the answer is absolutely you can. 
you'll still be earning UC credit. You can take your financial aid with you. And uh, our UC sister campuses have some really awesome study abroad programs. I would say UC Davis in particular is really popular with our students. And I'll talk about one of UC Davis's programs a bit later. That's a great fit for poli-sci students. Um, I mentioned study away opportunities. This is one category of study away. Virtual study abroad, uh, for many of you, like I mentioned, you may not be able to participate in a broad program at this time, or you may not be, you may not feel ready uh, in the pandemic to go abroad, and that's okay. Consider a virtual study abroad or virtual internship opportunity. This is a great way to add that global experience to your resume from the comfort of your home or wherever it is that you're working. We do have a virtual study abroad page on our website, and you can check that out. All right, Expo Week is coming up. It's literally next week. This is a, an opportunity to learn about our many, 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 many study abroad programs all over the world, virtually on your computer. And so this is our study abroad Expo site down below. You have to register for your each event. So take a look at the program categories in the info sessions and sign up for whatever you feel is appropriate for you. All right, I will pass it over to Natalie. Thank you. All right, y'all. So um, what you see here um, on the slide is just a screenshot of our study abroad page. Um, so you can find that on our website here. Um, I'll actually pop it in the chat. And give me one moment. All right, there you go. Um, so this is where you will find essentially anything and everything relating to study, studying abroad as a political science student. Um, and then it's a little bit cut off, um, but on the left, uh, if the screen you know, was bigger, you'll see that I've actually created uh, separate pages for the different study abroad programs that um, Andrew talked about. So you, know, you could take a peek there. Um, and see, you know, what that would look like as a political science major. Um, most of it is pretty similar, of course, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, and I do uh, link to the study abroad office um, and all of their helpful resources on this page as well. Um, but of course, you know, you will be talking to a lot of folks. Um, so a study abroad advisor, uh, myself as the department advisor and even your college advisor in terms of that planning that um, that Andrew talked about, um, because we do want to make sure that you all are excited about going and are planning uh, on going in a very uh, purposeful manner so that you aren't um, delaying time to graduation, because we do want you to essentially fit whatever you want to do into your plan. All right, next slide, please. All right, so here's the rundown um, as far as, you know, answering that big question of how do I know what classes fit in my major? And the cool thing with political science is that, um, you know, one, there you can take classes pretty much anywhere in the world. <laughs> um, I've made the joke previously, but it's, it's also true in the sense that I've uh, signed off on uh, the study abroad forms that uh, the study abroad office requires students to complete um, for students that have gone to programs on every single continent except Antarctica because there isn't a program there yet. Um, so there's many different uh, opportunities for you all to study abroad and we try and keep it as simple as possible. So in our department, as it says on the slide, um, our majors can transfer in up to six courses from outside UCSD into the major, which is pretty big considering we only require 16 courses for the major total. Um, now, in order for those courses to be applicable, um, we do ask that they be political science courses that they transfer to UCSD as an upper division class, that they are worth four or more quarter units each, um, and that you earn a letter grade of C minus or better in the class. And these are the same exact um, requirements that we have of, you know, students who are taking our own classes at UCSD. Um, now, I will say as far as uh, those up to six courses from outside UCSD, that includes study abroad courses, courses from community college, 
um, courses from other universities, um, whether that's a, you know, a state school or another UC or even outside, um, outside of California, um, really anything that is considered a transfer course. So I, I do just wanna clarify that. Um, and as, um, as it is at the bottom, again, plan early, plan ahead, um, just communicate with us um, that you do want to go abroad so we can best help you plan. Next slide, please. All right, so uh, this screenshot is of a specific page um, that I was talking about before of how um, I have those uh, sub pages for each of the programs that uh, Andrew talked about. And I do wanna bring uh, the attention to the UCEAP one specifically. And again, I'll, I will pop it in the chat as well here. Just give me one moment. Um, because one of the cool things that uh, we were able to do um, during the height of COVID is actually take a look at the political science courses that students, uh, not only from UCSD, but from all of the UCs, what they took, how it transferred in at their specific institution, and if we would also um, approve of those classes as well. And so we had our faculty review um, numerous courses that myself and our student worker had perused over, reviewed, and all that to say, we added hundreds of you know, new classes to that database. Um, and you can find those courses through the link you know, on that page. Um, so how you want to use that is if there is a certain uh, university that you want to study abroad at and you're curious about classes that have been approved in the past, you can take a look at that. Um, we will still ask you to submit those documentations to us when we um, review the, the um, I believe it's the academic, um, academic planning form. Um, and that way, you know, there is accountability and consistency, and we will still ask you to submit the uh, syllabi upon return, again, just for accountability, because then, you know, what I do is I re-upload it to your back, just so you all know, um, and uh, that is a really great way for you all to see what has been approved in the past, and not to say that we won't approve more, it just, you know, depends on what you all take, because you know, just as in our department, we had new classes every single quarter, it seems like um, other institutions also offer and add new classes. So um, I do just want to point that out for you all and hopefully it's a really great resource um, and makes it a little less stressful for you all to see, you know, what we've approved. But as I spoke about before, we're, we're pretty open to our classes. Um, you know, we're open to reviewing them. And, you know, we know that the discipline has so many trends and changes. Um, so again, just let us know if you are curious about a particular class and then I can have our faculty review it. Next slide, please. All right, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Natalie. Um, that's really great info, and hopefully you all were able to jot down a couple of notes about um, how transferring courses will work for political science. So now I want to highlight some study abroad programs uh, that are a great fit for poli-sci. This is obviously not an exhaustive list. These are just ones that I think are really fun and like to highlight for students. So first up, this is IES Abroad. This falls into our OAP program category. And this first program is called the European Union Program. It's actually a multi-country program based in Freiburg, Germany, but students visit Brussels, Frankfurt, Luxembourg, Paris, and Strasbourg over the course of the semester. If you study abroad during the spring semester, there is an optional internship if students want to participate. That price tag is recognizably on the more expensive end of our study abroad programs, but you do travel to so many countries over the course of that term. Uh, and this program is one of our affiliates, so they offer our students a, an automatic $2,000 grant. So that price tag comes down to $18,859 instead of $28,59. The other program I want to highlight from IES is the International Affairs and Security Studies Program based in Berlin, Germany. Um, having spent time at that center, I can say they, the faculty who teach these two programs are next level. Their experience in the field of international affairs is vast. 
their contacts across the European Union are vast and um, the types of experiences and hands-on learning that the students get is really next level. So definitely a very cool study abroad program. And then this uh, is what part of our UCEAP portfolio. It's political science at Sciences Po. Sciences Po is a premier political science institution. Um, there's a location in Paris and a location in France, both in France. Um, <clears throat> the France location has no minimum language requirement. Uh, the Paris location does have a minimum language requirement and requires that students take courses in French. When I say premier institute, I really mean that. It's, it collects political science students from all over the world and like world renowned political science faculty. So I would say this is very much for the very, very serious poli sci student. Um, it's not a competitive program. We take all students who are eligible, but it is a very rigorous program. So something to consider. We also have this very cool United Nations um, program in Geneva, Switzerland. The courses are all sort of related to the UN and um, international affairs. This is a spring semester program. So it runs the course of winter spring. And then if you wanna participate in, in an internship, it continues into the summer. It does require a minimum of one year of university level French. So if you're a student right now, let's say you're a first or second year student and you're thinking about this program, uh, but you haven't taken a French language yet, you have the opportunity to start now uh, to be eligible to, to take, to participate in this program um, for another year, um, maybe in your junior or your senior year. Um, I think this is a really unique program, especially if you are interested in the UN. We have had quite a lot of students participate over the years. This is another UCAP program, Social Justice and Activism in Paris. This program is obviously, as the name indicates, focused on social justice and activism. So all of the courses lend to that. I, this is a newer program. It came around uh, just right before the pandemic. So we have not <laughs> been able to send students on the program yet, but I'm hoping you might be among the first cohorts of students to participate. And then this is SIT study abroad. So this also falls into our OAP program category. And I love SIT because they are a field-based program and um, very much hands-on learning. So the program cohorts are very small. Um, the program study is pretty rigorous, but also very independent. So students can choose kind of their own tracks. Do they want to do an internship? Do they want to do... Um, a giant research project, whatever works best for your learning style. There's always a rural homestay involved in most locations. And some of these, like the one that I have pictured here in the middle, this is a comparative lens program. So students travel to multiple countries to look at a topic like rethinking food security or food security in each of those locations. Uh, they have programs listed by country and by um, critical global issue. So if environmentalism is important to you, if um, social justice is important to you, if international security is important to you, you can look at programs that just have those focuses. Um, SAT also provides our students not only a $5,000 scholarship, but also a $5,000 Pell Grant match. Um, so students can receive, we've had students receive up to $7,500 in grants and scholarships from SAT for one program. So that's pretty exciting. Their portfolio is um, vast and constantly changing. So they've added new programs. Uh, I checked the website this morning. They've added some brand new programs that look really cool. So I definitely encourage you to check those out. And then this is just a list of other UC programs that have um, that are strong in political science that I like around the world. I just I can't say I randomly picked them. These are programs I recommend to poli sci students all the time. So this is a pretty good assortment around the world. And again, this is not an exhaustive list. There are so many more programs that are a great fit for poli sci students. As Natalie said, you can take political science courses pretty much anywhere in the world, which is great. We can always recommend a university that has a strong poli sci department, like University of Kent here. This isn't a political science program, but they have a strong political science department. And so chances are, um, wherever you're thinking of studying, uh, we can find a program that's got great poli-sci courses available for you. 
I'll just kind of leave this up for a moment. Um, here's that UC Davis program I was mentioning. London School of Economics and Political Science is a premier uh, economics and political science institute, obviously well known, lots of name recognition. Um, through the UCEAP program, students can only study at LSE for the summertime. If students want to participate in this program during the school year, they have to uh, direct enroll at LSE for what they call the general course, which is a year long study abroad program. The only other option if a student doesn't want to participate in the summer or doesn't want to go for a full year is to attend through UC Davis's poli sci program. This is basically a faculty led program that UC Davis has set up at LSE. So students can go for just the fall semester through uh, UC Davis, which is pretty exciting. All right. So next steps are to begin researching programs. Uh, take a look at the different resources we have on our website that talk about how to start an application. Come to advising. We have drop-in advising on Monday and Thursday afternoons. We have uh, scheduled appointment advising. You can send us messages via the VAC. Lots of different ways to get connected with us. Come to Expo next week. Start planning. Talk to your advisors about the best time for you to go abroad. And then let's talk about COVID in the time, or <clears throat> study abroad in the time of COVID rather. So um, this fall, this current fall, fall 2020, 2021, we have our first full cohort of students abroad since the pandemic started. So this is a really big deal for us. We know that students have been through so much in the last couple of years and we've been there right along with them on this roller coaster. So we're really excited to say that we have students abroad right now. Not as many as we normally do, but we have a full group of students abroad and so far things are going really, really well and they are enjoying their, times, uh, their time abroad. So, Study abroad in the time of COVID means having a plan A and having a plan B and probably having a plan C as well. So plan A is you proceed with the process with your first choice program, you get to go and everything works out. Plan B is maybe that program closes uh, or maybe you're no longer able to participate in that program, but you have another program in mind that you've uh, thought about and can apply to or switch your application over to. Plan C is to enroll in classes at UCSD for the term that you're planning to go abroad in case your program gets canceled, in which case you can return to UCSD and continue with your studies. So we had several students whose programs were canceled last minute a few weeks before departure due to rising COVID cases. Um, and those students were still enrolled in their fall 2021 UCSD courses. So we were able to get them in and everything was just fine for their plan C. And that's just kind of the world that we're living in right now. We had new, program canc new programs canceled for spring as of literally this morning. Uh, and so that's just how we're rolling. We have um, UCAP in particular has a very, very rigorous standard uh, set of protocols that all of our program sites have to meet in order for programs to run. And so for example, Barbados for the spring was canceled this morning. Barbados, Barbados, cases, were, Barbados cases were uh, too high. Their vaccination rate was too low. And the site was no longer able to meet our standards and so that program had to be canceled and that's just an unfortunate part of where we're at. So know that we are trying to keep students abreast of information as uh, frequently as we possibly can and helping them to have lots of plans and uh, backup plans in place in case things uh, don't work out. The other thing that's worth mentioning is that um, not only UCEAP but almost all of our OAP affiliates are requiring that students be vaccinated. Uh, they're also requiring uh, not just the programs, but the host countries are requiring that students be vaccinated. So um, if you're thinking of studying abroad and you're not yet vaccinated, please know that that will likely be a requirement for your participation. All right, so this is how you get in contact with us. We have uh, our virtual front desk open um, during business hours and even extended evening hours most days of the week. And I think that's it. So now let me take a look at some of the questions that were submitted by you fine folks. I thank you all for submitting questions in advance as well. And I wanna make sure that they answer everything. 
So I see some students are interested in studying in Spain. We absolutely have program options in Spain. Uh, we have several institutions that I think are quite strong for political science and do not have minimum language requirements. So absolutely, pretty much all over the world. Our drop-in hours on Monday um, are 1 to 2.30 p.m. Our drop-in hours on Thursday are 2 to 3.30 p.m. For summer study abroad programs, um, there are still, again, options all over the world. You might not have a robust list of political science courses, but there will, should usually be one or two options that will work for you for political science or international relations and the majority of our locations. It is not too late to apply for summer or fall next year. Our, app <clears throat> our application cycle literally opened on Friday of last week, so it's just starting. Most of our deadlines for summer or fall are in January or February, so now is the perfect time uh, to get going. Okay, this question says, do we, uh, do we recommend that you establish a permanent advisor? Um, Natalie, I think I'll have you answer this one about advising. Yeah, um, so uh, in terms of like permanent advisor within our department, um, so it's uh, myself and then my colleague, Joanna, um, who do undergrad advising and so you know, we're both adept at, you know, advising students on requirements and really that's our role. So um, just to clarify, you know, we are best to ask, you know, when's a good time um, in reference to, you know, your other major requirements. So uh, for example, um, for those of you who um, say you want to do maybe our senior honors program, um, so that would be in your last year with us, and that is a fall and winter um, program. But you also tell us, you know, hey, yeah, I'd also like to study abroad fall of my senior year. Well, Joanna and I can, you know, clarify that with you and say, hey, actually, you know, something's, something's got to give there. So, um, you know, which one is more important to you, or is there a way for you to study abroad at a different time. So that's why we encourage you to connect with us early. Um, and then as far as uh, some questions about um, advising, so the Virtual Advising Center is the main point of contact for Joanna and I. Um, I did send an email out earlier, uh, earlier this week, yesterday, um, <laughs> about, you know, the steps in order to connect with us. Um, we can also offer Zoom meetings where, you know, we can elaborate on that. And then um, in time, we will offer in-person uh, advising as well. I will actually have an update for you all next week based on some conversations that Joanna and I have had with our supervisors and, you know, what we can provide uh, to you all safely. Um, so, you know, be on the lookout for that email next Monday. Um, as far as uh, drop-in advising uh, via Zoom, uh, that's not something Joanna and I uh, do. Uh, I just want to clarify, drop-in Zoom advising, just because our schedules are sort of all over the place. So for your all sanity and hours, um, that's something we're not doing uh, because we want it to be a little bit more structured. Um, so, you know, thank you all for working with us on that. We know fall is uh, another wild and interesting quarter, so um, we'll definitely get that to you all um, as soon as possible. But um, in terms of planning out, um, you know, the exact places that you want to study abroad and what those programs look like and, you know, financial aid and all that, that would be um, Andra and her colleagues. Um, that would be able to assist you with that. So um, use myself and Joanna in terms of planning uh, when may be the best time for you to study abroad, what political science courses you need to take before leaving. Um, so if there are certain classes that we recommend you complete so that you can go study abroad, be free, not have to worry about it. Um, that is our role and that is our job to help you with that as well as planning in other perhaps department related um, programs so that you can fit in uh, that and study abroad. So I hope that that clarified that matter. Um, but if you have questions, please just connect with us on the Virtual Advising Center for now and we'll be happy to explain that a little bit further. 
So our drop-in advising is offered remotely. Right now we're not doing any in-person advising, but that um, will hopefully change. Um, our entire team is still remote. So our drop-in advising and our pre-scheduled appointments are all remote for probably the remainder of fall quarter, but we will have in-person options available as soon as we are able to. So I'm gonna look at some of the questions that you all submitted in advance. <clears throat> we do have programs available in every country that all of you have said that you wanted to study in, so that's great. <clears throat> Many of our programs are offline, um, either because the country has not reopened their borders or for other reasons, but we're hoping to have uh, every country back online by next summer. Um, a couple of you asked <clears throat> about um, when you're paying tuition. So while, when you're studying abroad, you're not paying UC San Diego tuition. You're paying the cost of your study abroad program. The only UC San Diego fees you would be paying would be the campus-based fees, which right now are about $300. So everything else would be uh, related to your actual study abroad program. So no UC San Diego tuition or fees during your time abroad. Um, if, you're, if your focus in political science is American systems of government, um, you can still study abroad. Many of our program options take a look at the American lens of political science or the American lens on foreign relations, and you may find that valuable. But you also may find our UCDC program or our UC Sacramento program uh, more up to what you're looking for. <clears throat> Summer programs can be anywhere from three weeks to upwards of 10 weeks long. So it really depends on the program. I'd say most programs are about six weeks or eight weeks during the summertime. For transfer students, typically, and Natalie can also uh, um, pipe in here about this, um, for transfer students, typically the fall quarter of your senior year. So if you are a transfer student and you just got here this quarter, you should be planning right now and applying right now to study abroad next fall of your senior year. Natalie? Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, like I you know, said in the chat, and for those of you that uh, were able to attend um, orient virtual orientation, um, you know, early is always great. Um, you know, Andrew and I were just talking about before we invited you all in that this workshop was planned way in June <laughs> because I know that it's an important time for students to get this information right now. And it's just best to get it on the calendar and get it started. Um, I was just sharing some information uh, with the student through a direct message in the chat, but um, I know um, that it can be a lot of information and you're talking to quite a few people in order to make that happen. Um, and it can be overwhelming. We definitely understand that. So, you know, don't feel shy, don't feel guilty about um, you know, sending in your questions through the Virtual Advising Center, even if it's five, six questions, um, we get it all the time, um, you know, and we can help answer that and, uh, you know, meet with you best as we can in order to explain it even further, um, because we know that by giving you all the information and being transparent about it, um, that'll help answer some of your questions and then make the process that much easier because once you start getting your answers for it, then everything will fall into place. But, you know, um, Andrew was right in terms of students who study abroad often graduate earlier than their peers because of all this advanced planning that goes on. Um, so I know that might sound uh, wild to you all, but it's, it's true because everything else falls into place and then you know, oh, well, now I know what I'm going to do, you know, in my next couple of quarters. And again, just, um, you know, a bit of a bias, but with political science, uh, there is actually quite a bit of flexibility in terms of the classes you can take even at UCSD for your majors. Um, so, you know, that's the wonderful thing is that you can move classes, move your plan around um, and be flexible so that you can do what's um, important for you. That's right. <clears throat> and saving your electives for your time abroad allows you the flexibility to have a lot of breath in what you're studying because there will be courses offered abroad that are not offered at UCSD and it will allow you to explore other areas of political science and international relations that you can't necessarily explore here at UCSD. Ava, I see your hand up. 
I'm sorry to ask again. I think I know um, we covered the question, but then another question came on top of it with like the VAC. Um, when we ask the question, where will we direct it to? Because I'm like an undergrad, like it's my first year, so I really don't know exactly where should it go to for um, academic advising for like our major courses. So if it's uh, regarding your major courses, you would direct it to the political science department. Um, and again, like don't feel shy about sending the same question to myself or rather the political science department to your college because you will also interact with them in a way in terms of that planning for your college and university requirements. And then in you know, some variation of that question to the study abroad office as well. Um, I see it all the time, you know, and um, they do as well. We know that students may need to ask a similar question to many different people, and that's totally okay. That's honestly, in my opinion, the beauty of the Virtual Advising Center is that you have these references of previous conversations. Um, so that's helpful for you as a student. And honestly, it's helpful as advisors um, because then we also reference back to that. So I hope that helped clarify that for you. Um, I know the Virtual Advising Center can be a little bit confusing um, to use, but it's actually a really great tool for students and honestly was really helpful during COVID um, because it's not a um, it's not a tool that every university has. So did that answer your question or, or did you have something else that needed clarification? Actually, I have another one that just came in mind. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I was wondering, is it okay if we make an appointment to get our long-term schedule done with our um, with the political science department, like you guys? Because I was talking to my college, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we can't do this after your first quarter." But then, like, I want to make sure I'm on track for study abroad, so it's not as helpful that I'm seeing. So. Would you guys do a long-term planning with us for the political science department, our major courses? Yeah, so that's something we can do. Um, I will say, uh, again, it might just be something where we say, hey, you know, you have this many quarters. These are the classes you still need for your particular major. Um, and what we sometimes do is encourage you to kind of uh, take some time to think about what you want to do. So study abroad, I imagine, is one of them. Mm -hmm and other plans and just think about what's important to you, what would you like to do, um, maybe what are some uh, quarters in which you would like to do those things. And once you have a little bit more clarity about what you would like to do, then you can reconnect back with us and then we can have um, a meeting about what does that actually look like um, and does that work with you. Um, does that does that make sense? It's a, it's a bit about uh, that back and forth of, you know, you put in a little bit of work and then we review it and make sure everything's okay because it's your education, you know, we don't want to, um, you know, tell you what to do. We want to hear what you want to do and then our job is to make it as possible for you to achieve that. Yeah, thank you so much. Of course. Aurora. Hi there. Um, it's also towards the towards um, targeted towards Natalie. Sorry. Um, so I'm planning. Um, I'm a transfer student, so I know that my time is like on a crunch, and I need to get a lot of stuff like done right now. Um, and for me, I'm trying to make like backup plans, and study abroad is one of my backup plans um, because I would really like to do the internet. Uh, the I don't remember what it's called the bachelor's and master's in international affairs. Um, I know that there will be an informative session um, next week. And that's like my, that's my ultimate um, goal, but I'm one, I really want to, um, what's it called? If I don't get into the program, then I would like to study abroad. So is there a, I know that I was reading your email regarding the, the advising. When you say that, um, if questions are more complex, then we can set up a Zoom meeting. Does that mean we need to send in the message to back first and then we can decide it? Or can we just email you personally and ask for an in-person meeting? 
Yeah, so just send me a message on the Virtual Advising Center. Uh, that's just better, again, for um, for that clarity. Um, and I'll remember, you know, that, that you asked for it. And you can also say in the message, you know, hi, this is directed towards Natalie. You know, we, um, you know, you helped in, in the meeting. Um, I just wanted to move forward with this. Um, and then that'll be no problem. And then we can set up um, a time that, that works for us both. So yeah, myself and then Joanna are, we, it, we have flexibility with our time. And so we're trying to um, be flexible with that, but then also have structure for you all for, again, your sake. So um, more information will come next week about what that looks like, um, because we do want to communicate with you all. But Definitely just, just send a VAC message and, and I'll work with you because that's that's a perfect example of, you know, something that's more complex. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so there are a couple more questions that were submitted in advance that I want to make sure that I address. <clears throat> financial aid in terms of a summer program. So you do have more financial aid available to you during the school year. But if you're considering a summer program, you will have some of your financial aid available to you. If you're a Pell Grant recipient, that would be your summer Pell Grant. Uh, you get your summer UCSD grant, which is about, which is $2,000. Uh, and so that would be kind of it in terms of grants. You can apply for study abroad scholarships, of course, for summer. Um, but that would be it in terms of your financial aid. So uh, you would want to speak with, speak with our financial aid advisor in our office to find out, you know, what does your package look like for a specific term and a specific program so you can plan accordingly. Uh, I think there was one more. No, I think I got them all. Are there any other questions from anyone? Well, thank you all for attending and thank you for, for hanging in there till the end. Hopefully you feel really excited about the different program opportunities available for political science majors and know that there's lots and lots of support between our office and the, the political science department to help you throughout this process. We are here, you're not doing this on your own. Uh, so please don't hesitate to reach out to us. VAC is always the best way to get started. Um, and we'd love to be able to talk to you face-to-face -face via Zoom or perhaps one day in person. Um, to help you on your journey. Yeah, thank you all for being here. Have a good day. Thank Bye, you. everyone.